Hi, it's Tony Brisky from Real Ghost Stories Online. Every single day, Jenny and myself do our best to try and create the best possible show for you. But it's not free to do that. We have a lot of hard costs on this end to distribute the show, produce the show, and put it out there for you. So we ask for your help by becoming an EPP, an extra podcast person. We're doing our best to make it worth your while by giving you a bonus episode every single week with some of the best stories we can find. Also, exclusive video content, including our new monthly video feature, Seeing Ghosts, where we examine some of the best ghost photos and discuss them that we get into the show here at Real Ghost Stories Online. All I ask is that if you listen to the show on a regular basis, please consider helping support keeping it on the air. It's only $5 a month or sign up for a full year at a time and get one month free. If you already are an APP, thank you very much. If you're not yet, please consider supporting a show that you enjoy so we can continue creating it for you. Sign up at realghoststoriesonline.com. Click become an EPP and thank you. stories online call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at real ghost stories online.com you are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead this is real ghost stories online that indeed it is and on today's episode an elderly woman in a group home is frightened of something lurking in the corner a listener describes the feeling of something unseen playing with her hair and a session with a Ouija board accurately predicts one of the participants deaths those stories your calls and more today on real ghost stories online Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again hello I'm very intrigued by the Ouija board headline there yeah it's it's not too often that we get a completed story you know there's a lot of we uh-huh. used a ouija board and we haven't seen anything happen yet or stuff's been happening yeah but this is kind of a there's there's closure when the word death comes in yeah unfortunately yes. so it'll be uh an interesting story uh that uh, we shared with us also of course your calls our phone number here 855-853-4802 you can call that number 24 hours a day seven days a week i know we have a lot of new listeners who are like when what what time should we call Whenever the move or the mood strikes you, oh, yeah. whenever the spirit comes to you, whatever you want to call it, uh, you call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You leave your story there. It's it's not uh, we're not sitting there, uh, you know, chit chatting back and forth. It's uh, you leave your ghost story, and we may share it here on the show. So, uh, bonus points if it's uh, audible. <laughs> <laughs> Always a plus. If we're able to understand you. Uh, so uh, that's a good thing. So you can do that whenever you want. Or, of course, if you, uh, as writing is more your thing, you can always write into the website as well. Like I said, realghoststoriesonline.com. Get right to our uh, our first story today here on Real Ghost Stories Online. And it comes into us from Felicia. And Felicia writes, Hi, all. My name is Felicia, and I live in Wyoming. Is it hi, all up there and hi, y'all down south? Is that think so is that how it works maybe because we didn't really i'm 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 from uh you know wisconsin it's not exactly by wyoming but it's north but we say hey y'all hey you say hey y'all hey y'all hi all is is north hey y'all is south i guess i guess i don't know i just recently became an epp and i'm really enjoying catching up on all those episodes i recommended it to all it's definitely worth the five dollars a month Thank you for that endorsement. We appreciate that. Uh, In any case, let me get on with my story. I work in a group home as a group home supervisor for a facility that assists adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I'm in charge of overseeing the client and staff needs in some of our group homes. When I first started working here about 10 years ago, I was what was called a sleepover staff. I'd come to work at 5 p.m., help folks with dinner, cleaning their home and such. Then after everyone was in bed, I would clock out. There was a bed in the office and I got paid a fixed amount to sleep there just in case there was an emergency in the night. One of the ladies I worked with at the time was an older lady and she was and still is very sweet and kind, very much a grandmotherly figure. She is to this day one of my favorite people to work with. For the purposes of this story, I'll call her Helen to keep her identity confidential. At the time of the story, she had been experiencing some health problems, and so I was especially sensitive to any noises in the night, as I was worried about her. One night, around 2 p.m., I heard someone in the hallway. I opened the door to find Helen just outside the office door. I asked her what was wrong, and she said, The man, honey. 
he won't let me sleep. I didn't panic immediately because I've known her to have nightmares and sometimes think they were real. However, just to be cautious, I grabbed a large flashlight and the nearest weapon I could find, a yardstick. Don't laugh, I figured it was better than nothing. I walked down the hallway with her uh, back to her room. I slowly opened the door and peered inside to find no one there. Her window was closed and locked and I quickly checked the rest of the house just to be sure the rest of the house was still locked and there wasn't someone hiding anywhere. I walked her back to her room and said, Helen, there's no one here, sweetie. I think it was just a dream. She looked at me, shook her head and said, no, honey, he's there. He won't leave me alone. And she pointed to the corner of her room. The lights were on and I didn't see anyone. I again said, what man, Helen? I don't see anyone here. Again, pointing in the corner of her room, she said, there's a dark man, honey. It scares me. I walked further into her room, more than a little freaked out at this point. I swear to this day, as I approached that corner, her room got colder. And I started to feel sick to my stomach. I spun right back around at that point and took her back to the office. I let her sleep in the bed in there, and I sat in the recliner that was in the office and pretty much just watched her breathe for the rest of the night. I still wonder to this day if something had come for her that evening. Who knows, all I know is I'm glad she's still around. I have a few more stories about things that have happened here, and we'll send them in the future. Thanks for what you do. I truly enjoy it. Thanks. I think most people probably wouldn't have taken the time to go over to that corner where mm -hmm. she could sense, you know, what was going on. And they would probably would have just written it off as somebody that's not, you know not in the best mental capacity sure thinking something's there that's not mm -hmm. but sensing that temperature change makes all the difference yeah i mean she really put validity behind it and it wasn't just some sort of hallucination or something of that nature which you're exactly right it's it, someone who is you know taking care of someone in in a place like that would i think a lot of people would just write that off mm -hmm. going well you know it's what it's what happens it's part of the job just go back to sleep you're going to be fine they wouldn't have actually gone in and 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 tried to verify right really and she got the verification there that there in fact was something which you know in a case like that without verification it would be impossible to really know was this a hallucination of some sort or was this something paranormal i think she got the verification there um why would something like that happen well uh, what we see time and time again on this show and in stories that we hear is that uh unfortunately dark entities, things that uh, go bump in the night that, that aren't so kind, that aren't uh, exactly there for good, uh, tend to prey on those uh, who would be viewed as targets or, or I guess, weaker in some, some case. Sure. And, and so that would explain why uh, some things like this tend to happen more so uh, in locations like that. So thank you for your story and, uh, and thank you for your experience. And it's good that it, it seems to have calmed down Mm -hmm. It seemed to have not been a continuing thing there. Frankie writes in, Hi guys, this is the second time I'm writing in. I was the one who told the story about Santeria on the Now You See It episode last October. I'm at my desk right now catching up on your podcast and felt compelled to write about a paranormal incident that happened to me this past December. So you guys know that the new Star Wars came out last month. As a way to prepare ourselves for the new movie, my boyfriend Willie and I bought the entire collection and watched the sagas in chronological order. Well, one night during that week, we both had arrived home from work and I made dinner for us to eat while we watched the next episode in the living room. My boyfriend was already set up to start the movie while I got a plate together in the kitchen. I remember having both my hands full and ready to walk out to the kitchen, but I realized I forgot my drink. As I backed into the kitchen, I put down my plate with my right hand to reach for my drink and all of a sudden I felt movement in my hair. This movement felt either a huge bug I was stuck in my hair and was struggling to get out or someone was wiggling their fingers in my hair. I just know I wasn't imagining it because my hair was moving in front of my right eye. I immediately screamed, calmly put everything down on the counter and turned on the kitchen light. The moment I did that, I saw the lid from our lemonade pitcher wobbling on the counter as if someone picked it up and spun it themselves. I thought this to be especially strange since the lid wasn't on the pitcher. 
so it could not have accidentally fallen off. A dog must have heard me because he walked into the kitchen with a curious look on his face, but he didn't growl. So I felt that if there was anything in there, it wasn't harmful since he has barked at presences before. From the moment I screamed, I could hear Willie in the living room repeatedly asking me, What did you think you saw? Because he knows I hate spiders and thought I had just mistaken a bug or a piece of lint for one, which is typical, it was typical of me. I was frozen where I stood while processing this and hoping nothing would manifest in front of me, which is one of my biggest fears. I called him into the kitchen and reenacted the story for him. He starts to grin and I tell him in a soft voice, it happened, I swear it did. He hugged me and said he believed me, which is really nice considering that there are many people that have paranormal experiences that they can't share with their skeptical partners. Anyhow, I called my sister because she's sensitive, which I talked about in my previous story, and asked her if she sensed anything in my home. She assured me that there's definitely energy there, but nothing harmful to worry about. When I got off the phone, Willie joked that maybe the spirit was getting impatient with me because it wanted to know what happened in the next Star Wars episode, which reminds me a lot of how Tony jokes with Jen on the podcast. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the story. It'll be interesting to hear what you make of it. Hope you're having a happy new year, Frankie. Maybe it just wanted acknowledgement that it was there. And, you know, with the sister saying it's not something bad, Mm-hmm. Hopefully that it's the same entity that she sensed. Hopefully. Yeah. Have you been antiquing lately? <laughs> Anything new come home that freaks you out? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's almost a playful kind of spirit. I'm uh, kind of uh, fingers crossed that I'm going to have the sound of uh, children giggling or something uh, around here soon. Because I just got a new antique for the office that I found really uh, cheaply. Ghost children is what I'm referring to. I haven't put it in here yet. Oh. That new locker. Yeah. Found an old locker at uh, in an antique store the other day, and it was very cheap, and I thought, oh, this would be perfect for the office. Give you some more storage. And more storage, and it's a nice little piece, too, for some of the videos we make. Kind of a nice little background, kind of creepy piece for mm-hmm. stuff that we talked about. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll get some, uh, some ghost stuff out of it. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not purposely trying to haunt the house. It was really funny when we bought it. You know, the girls were standing by it. Next thing I know, the big one's putting the little one in there. So <laughs> there's probably some residual energy of that happening to some other child. That's true. Which is it's kind of funny. It wasn't the other way around. For once, it was the big one picking on the little one. Yeah, but I asked, okay, whose idea was this? And Harper goes, it was my idea. It might have, you know, it might have been one of those things where she had it in her mind of, okay, I'll let her put me in there for a second. And then I'll put her in there and leave and, her. And leave her. Yes, mm-hmm. that's probably the strategy she employed until we stepped in and said okay no putting each other in the lockers mm-hmm. she works like that she does she's always three steps ahead of everybody <laughs> shelby writes in have you uh, played with a ouija board if not i do not recommend trying it it's in bold so that's my bold that's your bold voice. it's my bold voice okay i do not recommend it's also my voice of constipation yeah that's i was gonna say <laughs> to see what your all caps voice is. That is my all caps. It's all caps. Oh, that is my all, all caps. Yeah, okay. you're right. So, okay, so that would be all caps voice. Okay. All caps and bold? Let's just say it was. That's okay. going to be a shark. I do not recommend. <laughs> God. <laughs> Let's start over, shall we? Okay. okay. Have you ever played with a Ouija board? If not, I do not recommend trying it. This is my uh, story, and this is why. Back in 2007, I was just finishing my sophomore year in high school. It was the last day of school, and a couple of friends and I, Brooke and Leah, decided to leave school early. Leah had a cousin who we were all friends with, which was already out of school, so she called him and had him come pick us up. We didn't really have anything to do, but Jay, Leah's cousin, needed to go to Walmart to pick up a camera he'd been wanting. It was a normal trip. We got the camera, then headed back to my house to hang out for a little bit. We had a few more friends coming over later that evening. The four of us were in my room, and we somehow got to the topic about the paranormal and what experiences we've had. I never truly experienced firsthand anything paranormal, but I was always a believer. I'm a huge paranormal and horror movie fan, I mentioned. I've always wanted to try out a Ouija board. And to my surprise, all three of them felt the same way and were intrigued by the idea. So we got the bright idea to go pick one up and try it out. I mean, why not? What was the worst thing that could happen? We loaded up in Jay's car, headed towards the mall, 
We looked up online places to buy one, and the only place we could find was the Spencer's. We got the board, went back to my house, and went upstairs, sat on the floor, took the board and planchette out, put our fingers on it, then just sat in silence for a moment. What should we ask, I said. Before we start asking questions, I think we should all vow to not move it ourselves to scare each other. Let's see if this really works. Jay replied, we all agreed. Is anyone there? Does anyone want to talk? The planchette barely moved. We moved an inch. So, someone does want to talk, I said. The planchette moved to yes. We all looked at each other and swore up and down that none of us were moving it. What's your name? Someone asked. I cannot for the life of me remember the name, but I do remember it was a male name, and they were also very nice and were fun to talk to. We talked to him for about 30 minutes, but then it randomly started talking, taking a darker turn. The planchette started spelling out cuss words like uh, bitch and uh, fuck, and we knew we weren't talking to a nice guy anymore. What's your name? I refuse to even spell it out, just thinking about the name. It sends chills down my spine. Guys, don't talk to him, Leah shouted. We were all so surprised and scared by our exclamation, we took our hands off the planchette without saying goodbye, which is really not good in case you didn't know it can open a door. Why? We all basically said at once. It's an evil entity, a demon. He feeds off negativity and sadness, she answered. We were all pretty freaked out. We were hesitant, but we decided to keep playing. When we put our fingers back on the planchette, it immediately spelled out, Hi, and we asked, What's your name? It spelled out the name, and we'll not spell it or say it here. Uh, Brooke and Leah freaked out. Brooke had some strange things going on in her house, and while back, Leah had helped her do some EVPs. They heard a little girl's voice, and it said the name again. They did more digging about the property in her house, and the house that it was on, and found out there was a Native American burial ground on their property. They called some people in, got some bones removed from the property, and there was a skull of a little girl. They both asked her all kinds of questions. They asked her to move Brooke's hair. As we waited patiently, we watched as Brooke's hair swayed back and forth like someone was touching it. We didn't know what to think of it. We asked a few more questions, and that's when things started taking a dark turn again. We started getting cuss words spelled out to us again. At this point, our other friends had arrived at my house, and they were pretty upset. They didn't want anything to do with the board. One of my close friends and myself got into a huge fight, and she ended up leaving and taking everyone but the four of us with her. But it was like we didn't care. We were obsessed with the board. We couldn't stop playing with it. The board spelled out ha ha when we were all fighting like it was happy about it. At one point, it said that it was going to show itself. When we asked how, it spelled out KJ. I freaked out. Those are my sister's initials. It then went to no, and then it said it would show itself at 5 a.m. It also told us that something would happen to one of us when we turned 18. We finally decided it was time to stop. We took the board and planchette to the side of the hill that had a river at the bottom that was outside my house. We tried to burn it, but it wouldn't burn, so we decided to tear it up and break it in half. We did the same thing with the planchette. As we were throwing it down the hill, we saw weeds moving and heard rustling like something was coming up the hill. It was dark out, so it scared us pretty bad. Leah was turned a different way, and she screamed, What? I just saw a black figure run behind us. Please tell me you're joking, Leah. No, I don't think she's joking, and we all took off running back to my house. Thank goodness Leah and Brooke were staying all night with me. I just had to take Leah to get some clothes from her house. Jay said he would take us, and we decided to grab the box with the instructions that the board came in so we could dispose of them. We were driving down a backcountry road and just threw the box with the instructions out the window. We got back to my house, Jay left, and we were all tired, so we decided to just lie down and go to sleep. I was woken up out of nowhere by Leah and Brooke. They had both woken up at the same time, 4.58. We were so scared. We looked around, afraid we might see something, and I decided to just roll over and go back to sleep. Nothing really happened for a week until I went over to Brooke's house to stay all night. I was changing my jeans in her room and was making sure my money wasn't in my pocket when I felt something weird and ripped up, so I pulled it out. It was the instructions to the Ouija board. We'd thrown out the window with the box. How they got there, I'll never know. 
Another thing that happened was I was in my room alone watching TV with only a lamp on that was plugged up beside my closet. I saw something out of the corner of my eye and glanced over. The cord jerked out of the wall, leaving the room pitch black. I ran out and never went back in there alone. Also, my mom told me she didn't know we used the board. And that she had went into my room to get something. When she walked by my closet door, she felt like something was staring her down. We eventually move, but no matter where I go, something follows me. The evil entity doesn't. Thank goodness. Still lurks in the house. I know a girl that moved into the house, and she sent me videos of things moving in her room and something banging on her door and trying to get in. Her room is right below my old bedroom. But whatever follows me doesn't have a problem letting me know it's here. Whether it's rummaging through my closet like it's looking for something or walking me. Waking me up in the middle of the night with a loud noise. On November 23rd, 2009, Brooke was killed in a car accident. She turned 18 on September 19th of 2009. It was something that completely shook me to my core. And to this day, I still haven't gotten over it. Sometimes I regret messing with the board because maybe she would still be here if we hadn't messed with the evil entity. I very, very rarely, and I may not have ever done this, but I'm going to not stick up for the Ouija board, but I'm going to say something about it. And now Jenny says something about a Ouija board. Okay, On thank Real you. Ghost Stories Online. I think the guilt of playing with the Ouija board, thinking it caused the accident that killed Brooke, is kind of like blaming the weatherman for the weather. Okay. I think the Ouija board wasn't the reason that the accident happened. I think it was just foretelling what's going to happen, and that's something nobody should ever have to know. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of the same thing. You don't blame the weatherman for the weather that he told you about was on the way. I think you're probably right there. And so I don't think that there should be guilt there for playing with it because I don't think it's the reason that the accident happened. Sure, I agree. I think if if there's anything you want to connect with the Ouija board, it may be whatever sort of weird energy you have following you around or the experiences that you had, you know, that may be uh, more connected to the Ouija board way more than the accident that right. she was involved in. So, you know, feeling like there's something watching you in your closet or something of that nature, you may have conjured something up there. I, I don't think it really had anything to do with the accident. I think, I agree. I think the accident is just one of those things where these things have knowledge of the future. Yeah. And they'll tell you horrible shit about the future, whether you want to know it or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, that may be, you know, there's no way of, of avoiding the future. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, you know, or avoiding what uh, whatever may come in it. So I agree. I think you're right. I think the weatherman analogy is pretty accurate. Okay. A real messed up, freaky ass weatherman. For sure. What if you had a weatherman who did the forecast with a Ouija board? I would not watch that weatherman. <laughs> it's on the green screen. It's just a Ouija board. It's like it takes like an hour to get your forecast. No. And now the seven day. Oh, God. <laughs> This will take about 35 minutes to get the seven day. And uh, for Monday, what do we got? C, L, O, and it just very slowly. What about the barometric pressure, Ouija? What are we looking at there? No. That'd be great. That would be an amusing weather forecast. Uh, let's go to a caller at 855-853-4802. Hi. Hi, uh, my name's Ryan. I had just recently started listening to your podcast, and uh, or I had just recently got into podca podcasts in general, and I saw yours pop up on a recommended tab, and I felt like sharing one of my many <laughs> paranormal experiences, but uh, this one being the, the freakiest, definitely at the top of the list. Um, it took place at Taunton State Hospital, which if you couldn't guess, is located in Taunton, Massachusetts. And uh, there was a period in my life where I went there with a friend of mine, and uh, occasionally a few other friends would go as well. We would go every day. 
And I mean, this literally lasted for like a year. We would go every single day, you know, go home, eat dinner, go back at night. You know, like it was just something we were obsessed with. And uh, the last time we went, and this is why we stopped going, <laughs> uh, something incredibly horrifying had happened. So, uh, long story short, we uh, we had been going there for a while, and each time we had been to the hospital in each individual building, we would always walk by this this one gate, and it was uh or not a I wouldn't guess I guess I wouldn't call it a gate, but it was a fenced off area with a door in the middle, and that door when you opened it led to a basement, but it was padlocked and chained up and you know for whatever reason whether it was uh, the guys doing construction there because it was being torn down or if somebody just really didn't want anybody going down there but nonetheless after months of going there and just being more intrigued every time we walked by it we eventually brought bolt cutters with us and we ended up cutting the lock and the chain and uh, at at this time we had brought about six people with us so or I'm sorry six people in total me and my friend and four others uh, we went into the basement and it was pitch black so we all had you know phones with flashlights lighters and such so we uh, went through the basement and it was just a long 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 room it felt like it went on for forever and uh, we had eventually got to the end and there was a pe huge pentagram on the floor that was drawn in blood and uh, just blood stains all over the walls at the at the end of that room so we uh, we all kind of got a little you know shook but we didn't you know we didn't freak out we didn't hear anything yet uh, so uh, one of my friends that was with us, uh, her name was Katie, she had been, what she said, touched. Something grabbed her shoulders. And you know, she kept saying, all right, you know, real funny guys, cut it out. Like, you know, typical people going to a haunted place just trying to freak each other out. And uh, none of us did it. <laughs> Nobody touched her. So, you know, we just shook it off, like, okay, somebody must have done it. And um, it happened again, but this time something pulled her hair. So she really freaked out, and she's like, okay, guys, you know, we, we have to go. This is, this is getting out of hand. So we all turn around, and we hear this loud screech. Or, like, a, like a banshee. Not, not even a scream, like a screech, like brakes being jacked on type of screech and uh you know all, all we started running and next thing you know all of our lights turn off all the lighters turned off everything all of our phones were dead they wouldn't turn on nothing would work so we're running and uh <laughs> as uh as we're going through the room my friend katie had tripped and uh, one of my other friends that was with us, Nick, didn't stop for her, so I had to turn around, go back, and grab her. And in the process of doing so, when I went to go pick her up, I looked behind her, and uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm sure you guys would understand that, uh, you know, the blacker than black, like, you know, you could be in a room with the lights off, but you could still see something that was pitch black. I uh, hope I'm making sense there. But, um... I had seen a figure and then a face that got maybe an inch away from mine, right up to my nose, and it screamed at me, and we, we just kept running and running, and I looked behind us as we were running, and there was more than one of them. There was a few things or people chasing us, and uh, we had eventually gotten out. We had gotten out of the hospital, and for months, you know, I had uh, nightmares about it. 
you know, my friend, uh, my friend Katie actually ended up spending the night with us pretty much every night for the next month or so <laughs> till, uh, you know, she kind of, kind of got in trouble and <laughs> people were trying to figure out where she was. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we got really freaked out by it. And after listening to a few stories on here, I figured, you know, that'd be a good one. <laughs> So uh, I hope you like it. I hope you use it on one of your podcasts. I'm definitely going to be listening frequently. So uh, if I hear it, I think it'll be kind of weird hearing myself. But hey, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, thanks for your time. I hope you choose my story and uh, keep up the good work. Have a good night. I think it was pretty much a classic uh, shadow type person experience there. I think so. I think... You know, beyond that, anytime you have a location that you kind of feel drawn and almost obsessed with, I Mm -hmm. think that's a cause for concern, not just from the fact that you're probably neglecting other responsibilities to go to this place, but just because there's something probably pulling you there. I know a place that pulled you out. What? That that you were we were recently at and I'm, we, we've both been drawn to the topic, but you were like wanting to get the hell out of I, the place. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. No. We were at the, uh, we've had stories on the show about this mm-hmm. place, um, about the, uh, the Titanic museum. The one uh, in Branson. The one in Branson. And this is the one, if you've ever seen pictures of it, it's like, uh, it's half the ship and then half the scale. So it's still pretty damn big. Sure. As far as like you see it, you're like, oh, holy shit! And I was really impressed. I mean, I, this is the first time I'd ever been there to see it, and I, I was, I guess, I you know, from pictures, I, I never saw one that I guess was super detailed, but I just kind of expected it to be like a you know, a big concrete block that was shaped like the Titanic. I did not expect it to be as detailed as it was. It's riveted and everything. It, it looks like a ship. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you did not know that, I mean if you didn't like look at the other end and it's cut in half uh but if you were just there you'd be like that's a ship mm-hmm. i mean it looks about as accurate i think as you can probably get yeah uh it's 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 very moving when you see it if you're a titanic dork you're like holy shit um and then uh you go inside and it's an interesting museum this is one where they don't they don't have items in there that were recovered from the ocean any item that is in there was recovered uh, literally right after it was stuff that was floating on top of the water after the disaster um, or with the survivor or with a survivor yeah or yeah. It was uh, something that was taken uh, with a survivor like a life vest or mm-hmm. something but it, it, it it's a museum that doesn't take things from the ocean uh, and, and then display it um, so that I mean it, it's a it's a very tastefully done very respectful of the event it, it doesn't really exploit it it's just it's telling the story of the, the history of what, what happened anyway uh, we went through it, uh, and full uh, model of the, not model, it's a full set of the Grand Staircase there to scale. Yeah. You can walk the Grand Staircase, which is... You, you have to, to get yeah. through it to the next part of the museum. Pretty amazing. I mean, it, it's not like, oh, this is like a slight, you know, kind of like a recreation or a rendition of it. It's the damn Grand Staircase. Well, it's a recreation. Yeah. But it's yeah. to scale, to detail. It's amazing. It's very... It, it takes you back when you see it. It's yeah. really, if you've studied this and are dorks like we are, it, it it's emotional. It is. I mean, you see it and it's like, oh my God, this is, this is it. You could take a picture, you could set it right next to the real Grand Staircase picture and it looks the same. You're not supposed to take pictures in if there. If you were to in theory. But if in yeah. theory, yes. Yeah. So that's... Uh, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of other items on there. There's stuff from the Olympic. Uh, it's sister ship in there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, towards the end, I mean, share your experience and, and why you felt the urge to leave the building. <laughs> well, I just felt so uncomfortable the whole time. And I think what makes this different, because we have actually been to the Maritime Museum in Nova Scotia mm-hmm. in Halifax, where that's the largest collection of Titanic Mm -hmm. items because that's the closest port where they actually brought the you know they people bodies and survivors yeah people left from there to go help in the effort Mm -hmm. anyway you know that one did not i mean it was emotional but that one did not give me the willies the way this one did Mm -hmm. this one was very different and i think part of it is because all the items in there that are authentic 
came with the people that lived through it. So mm-hmm. how much fear is absorbed into those items? Mm-hmm. And the worst one in there was um, John Jacob Astor's wife's life vest. Mm-hmm. That that one, I was like ready to go after I saw that one. You didn't want to walk right up to it and no. try it on? <laughs> oh, you can't. It's behind glass. But that was the whole thing. It's just, it really... I don't know. It had a whole different feel to it. Sure. And we've had listeners write in about their experiences there and feeling like there was um, entities there. Mm -hmm. And I totally get that. I couldn't tell you how many or male or female or anything like that, but couldn't couldn't get out of there fast enough. I was like, yeah, I know you want to see this, but let's go. Let's go. I would I would guess that if you were to, uh, uh, you know, figure out okay what what objects are likely to to have something attached to them mm-hmm. probably got some good odds on the objects that are on display yeah. at that is, is that the museum because we had a story of a titanic exhibit and i i don't recall if it was referring to that museum or one of the traveling exhibits there's mm-hmm. many of them out there where someone had uh it was like after hours this was a long time ago it was a story that was on the show and they they saw that they saw an old person going through the exhibit and you can probably tell it better than I can. This was it. It wasn't after hours. It was like they were the last ones through. Okay. And the room where he was was the one where you go through the doors and then it's like going out onto the the deck of okay. the ship at night. Uh-huh. And they've got it, you know, climate controlled to where it feels as cold as it did. Sure. And it's as dark as it was yeah. and all that. And that's where they saw him. Oh, is that why you wanted to get out of that room? You think? Did you? Oh, you didn't tell me that. Well, I thought you've heard that story too. It's been so long, I don't remember all the details. I remember that there was like some figure that someone had reportedly seen in part of the museum. I didn't remember the specific room that it was in. Do you remember what Harper did? She didn't want to go in there. She freaked out. Yeah. The whole thing was fine until then. And she freaked out and she was like, you know, climbing on top of us trying to get out of there. I had to carry her through that room. And we had to hurry through it. Because she refused to go in that room. Uh Uh-huh. And it's not like I told the three-year-old, hey, here's a haunted (laughs) room. Let's go through this one. (laughs) Little one, we had a story on our ghost. Right. That we said nothing of ghosts or anything. She was, in fact, she was really into the the whole museum. She was really enjoying looking at everything. And there were, like, right before that, there was a big, uh, you know, the captain's wheel, Mm -hmm. you know, and she was spinning that and, and... there was a lot of interactive stuff for kids, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and she was really in good spirits until we hit that door. Yep. That door opened and she was like freaking out suddenly like, uh-uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to go out there. I don't. She's talking. And then she continued to talk about that room mm-hmm. days after. Mm-hmm. Well, it's all coming back to me now in the words of Celine Dion. She's the littlest empath. Well, I just connected some dots there. Mm-hmm. Because I even asked her, like, the next, no matter how many amazing, fun things you do with a child that she has a great time with, you ask her, oh, what did you think of uh, today? She'll pick the one thing that she didn't like. Right. And she's you, and she's a great spirit about everything. She really is not a difficult kid. But uh, she'll when you ask her to recount something, she'll pick out the one thing that really had, like, a negative impact on her. And she'll, it's like, uh, I didn't like that. Uh, here's my heart broke. I didn't like the cold room. Yeah. I didn't I didn't want to go back to that room. <laughs> you sound like a chipmunk. I know. That's my best impression of our three year old. But uh then because I asked her about that a couple times and she only recounted that room, not all the fun she had, but that one place. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There you go. She knows shit. She does. She'll uh I'm sure have some more great ghost stories for us this Halloween. <laughs> Maybe we'll take it a step up from no noggin. <laughs> Maybe so. We'll see. It's gonna call her hi. Hello, Briskies. This is Jesse from um, the stories on episode Tragic Warning and also on Knock Knock. I just wanted to call in and thank you so much for telling my stories. You have no idea what it means to me. I know um, there's not a whole lot of stock put into dreaming right now, um, so I just wanted to let you know that it means a lot. And also to tell you a little bit about what has been going on in my apartment the last year or so. I have um, recently had someone move in above us who is into tarot cards and they are um, 
is a true when it comes to their belief systems and they're also very um, true to the Native American beliefs and it seems that when they moved in things started to happen a little bit more don't get me wrong I like them they're my friends it, it just seems to be uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence or what um, that things seem to happen now that they are living above us um, one of the things that happened was real quick is I was making supper and I went to take a pot off the stove off one of the front burners of the stove and put it into the sink well when I turned around and set it into the sink I heard a sliding noise it kind of went sh -kunk. and I turned around and looked at the stove and the ceramic spoon um, holder that I have so you don't get gunk all over your stove top when you set your spoon down um, had moved from in between the two back burners and slid up against the left back burner um, I thought maybe I had bumped it even though the timing didn't really seem right so I moved it back to the middle and then I pushed it with my finger to try to mimic the sound and it matched perfectly thought to myself mm, that's weird and I just went on my merry way um, and before that about a month before that happened I was bending down to get something off of a shelf and it felt like my dog had come up and goosed me in the bum well he does that when he has a toy and he wants to get you to play um, he'll come up behind you and he'll poke you in the butt <laughs> kind of like hey I want to play I want to play well I was like hey stop that knock it off um, and I turned around and he was all the way across the room laying down um, playing with a toy next to my husband and I thought wow that's really really strange I said did, did you touch me and he's like nope we've been over here the whole time I said okay that's weird not sure what is going on there and then went on with my merry way because I don't like to acknowledge when things like that happen I don't like to make a big deal out of it just in case something you know is to happen even more because they go oh she can she can hear she can see blah 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 but anyway um, and then about three days later it happened again while I was making my lunch in the kitchen um, I work from home so I am by myself most of the day it's just me and the dog and um, I was making my lunch and I felt like I had been goosed <laughs> and I was like okay this is really really strange I don't know what's going on because I turned around and there's nothing there um, and so I was like okay that's weird can you please stop that because that's not cool and then I went on my you know normal normal day um, and the last time it happened I was again by myself um, getting ready to um, go to a roller derby because I I NSO for a roller derby and I got goosed in the butt again and I was like okay this is it I have to talk to, to my friend who lives above me because she knows she feels like she can um, kind of know what's going on when stuff like that happens and she happened to be going to NSO with me as well and so we were sitting um, in the room waiting for the bout to start and I had mentioned to her that it felt like I was getting, you know, goosed by either a dog or a little kid. And she goes, yep, it's been happening to me too. I don't know what it is. She's like, I think it's just a little kid passing through. Well, that <clears throat> may have been the case, but it, it didn't happen again. So I don't, I don't really know what to take about it. Um, but I guess that's really the only two things that I can remember right now I'm sure there's more but um, I just again wanted to thank you so much uh, for playing my stories and you know believing in me enough to know that they aren't completely off the wall um, it means a great deal to me I have become an EPP and I enjoy the all the you know benefits you get from being an EPP it's kind of kind of nice to hear the real spooky ones um, but I, I just want to know if it maybe because of the people moving in that has heightened what's going on or if maybe I'm coming into abilities of my own that I don't know I have that I do have because um, I can sometimes tell when things are going to happen before they happen but uh, I just wanted to thank you again and I hope to hear this story on the podcast. Thank you so much and have a great day.
I think maybe not necessarily because of the tarot cards, because every time we talk about tarot cards, we get somebody calling in mad at us. But I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe just the increased amount of sensitivity and spiritual awareness, I guess, okay. in the area. You know, might be there was a little spirit there that's like, oh, hey, they're into this stuff. Now I can start doing things and they'll notice me. I mean, kind of like just, you know, something, you know, the the best analogy I can make is uh, like flies or bugs at night being drawn to light. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm drawn to this because they're what I need. Exactly. And that's kind of, you know, what, what I think sometimes happens when you have a, a larger group of sensitive people around, you're going to have the entities more drawn to them. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe it's, you know, bothering her just because of her proximity sure sure that, that would make sense thank you for uh for sharing your experience with us and uh thank you for being an epp and supporting the show helping to keep it on the air we greatly appreciate that uh let's go to mike in nz would that be new zealand it is all right mike hi let's hear your story hi tony and jenny it's mike from new zealand here uh called and written in a few times with different stories, but I'm pretty sure this is the last one. I'm a huge uh, fan of the show. I listen a lot. Um, I've even got a couple of my friends <laughs> listening to it when we have sleepovers. I need to listen to this show to go to sleep, and so they've also become addicted. You're welcome. I'm bringing in fans. Yay! <laughs> um, so this story happened when I was about 19. I had just moved into my first flat. Uh, with two other people uh, who were both friends of mine and there was an entrance way there was the door and then my um, my bedroom was to the left of the door and then there were stairs going up to the rest of the flat where the other two lived and there was the lounge there as well and the kitchen and the bathroom and all that sort of thing and my I had a cat who refused to go up the stairs absolutely she uh as soon as we moved in she went into my room and normally when i moved her around different places she would go and explore the whole house as cats do but i never once saw her on the top on the top floor she never went past the stairs um and we had a back door at the top of the stairs with the cat door in it and i used to have to put her out the front door and let her in the front door because she wouldn't go around the back she wouldn't go on uh, go on the stairs at all she was terrified of them um i did all, used to walk out quite often of my bedroom and see her just sitting there staring at the stairs um i dismissed it because <laughs> cats you know <laughs> you know cats they just uh stare at things uh so i didn't think much of it she also had an obsession with um a closet in my room and uh, my room was often the coldest point in the house which is odd because it got the most sun um and one night i was in bed and i was asleep and i hear this big crash and i look up and my bookshelf had broken <laughs> one of the it was a very big sturdy bookshelf and i didn't have too many books stacked on this shelf it was a relatively empty shelf and the shelf just fell off all of a sudden and i woke up to this crash with this <laughs> bit of shelf on the floor uh my dad looked at it he could see no reason as to why it would have been broken so that was really weird and when i woke up it was freezing cold in my room despite it being a warm summer night and everywhere else in the house it was quite quite warm and quite humid um and one time i had uh uh been out and i'd brought brought someone home for a uh, one night stand don't don't judge me and so i didn't i didn't know this person at all i just met them at a bar <laughs> and <laughs> I, he came over and we had fallen asleep and I woke up at sort of four o'clock in the morning and and this person was standing over me um which I thought was a bit odd but I thought it was just the usual sort of creepiness that can arise in that situation 
Uh, but I looked closely and this person looked... Uh, their eyes were glazed. There was, there was, It looked like nothing was going on. And this person was standing there and I asked, are you okay? And he said, it's on the stairs. And that freaked me the hell out. And um, nothing else really happened in that flat, but I was always very wary going up and down the stairs after that. Um, so yeah, that's my story. It's not a particularly long one, and it is my last. I should have saved one of the better ones for last, but that's okay. Uh, thank you so much for the show. I hope y'all are having a great day. Bye. Nothing like somebody that's not familiar with the layout <laughs> to be able to tell you, hey, there's there's something going on here. You know, because I'm sure his spidey senses weren't going off when you guys first got there. Mm -hmm. But something new that he was sensitive and decided to mess with him during the night. Yeah. That's, uh, I guess, a little validation mm -hmm. that there's something going on at your place. Thanks for uh, for sharing that experience with us. We uh, we do appreciate you taking the time to do it. Did he email us an MP3? Is that how he? He did. Okay. It's why it sounded so crystal clear. <laughs> so, yeah, if you are overseas and you don't want to pay a phone bill, do that. Yeah, that we talked about that the other day a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as, because uh, we have a lot of people overseas who are like, I can't call your number because I don't want to spend $50 on a phone call. But I want to share my story verbally. That's a good way to do it. Uh, if you just record on your uh, your phone uh, an MP3 or M4A or whatever the file format is, then you uh, can email it. Uh, just email it direct to me, Tony, T-O-N-Y, at realghoststoriesonline.com, and we can uh, add you to the, uh, the, the load of phone call consideration uh, for the show. So there yeah, you go. Works. That's your way of doing it. Uh, or, of course, you can write in, too. There's uh, multiple ways to get your stories to us on our website, realghoststoriesonline.com. And there you have it. That wraps up today's uh, episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, sign up to be an EPP extra podcast person. Get all the bonus episodes of the show, all almost 80 of them now. Access to the exclusive video content and more. Uh, the uh, next episode, because uh, this is coming out on a Wednesday, will be the uh, the Friday EPP episode. So if you want another episode this week, there you go. Sign up to be an EPP and you shall get it Friday for your uh, listening enjoyment or, or sign up now and uh, start binging through the 80-some uh, the episodes. And maybe you'll be done with them by Friday. I think that's actually impossible. It is. There's you, not enough hours. There's not enough hours. So there you go. Uh, you can uh, get plenty of episodes right now when you sign up and that uh, is what keeps our show on the air. So check it out, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click become and EPP. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thank you for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.